Hi there folks, welcome back to the channel. Um, big shout out to all the new subscribers. Thank you for uh, subscribing. I hope you stick about. Uh, it does seem a lot of the uh, interest in my channel has come from the turning over of the Rolls Royce Merlin from Halifax HR871. Great to get some feedback. A um, few negative comments. For one, uh, one was, it's less than worthless. Okay. Um, are you going to get it running? No. So yeah, um, I think some people are missing the point. It's about the history and it's about the story. It's not about getting it running. Uh, there's easier ways to get a running Merlin engine. And speaking of engines, I would like to have a collection of engines that won the war. We've got two. We have the Rolls-Royce Merlin. We have a Bristol Hercules. But it'd be nice to have some uh, other engines. Um, how should we say? There was a lot of vehicles, etc. And equipment on airfields that had petrol and diesel engines. It'd be nice to have some of those. Some of those we could have running. For example, I'm currently sat in a Bedford QL. And this old girl was in Normandy on D-Day. Yep, she was a true golden gem with a story to tell. Well, she does need some work. What a beauty. Currently on display at the museum before she goes for restoration. I do wonder if that's uh, genuine mileage. Anyway, I'll give you a little, uh, a little look around it and then I want to uh, put a clip in of a visitor to the museum who has had a big part to play in obtaining two of our engines, including the Rolls Royce Merlin. So stay tuned folks. What a golden gem. I'm sure to many it probably looks like scrap. If only you could tell its story. Also packed up is a couple of Carrier K6 winch trucks. Yes, this one, okay, I'll admit it. It does look like scrap. So I need some love and attention. But Unlike modern vehicles, construction was quite simple, so therefore it is restorable. Got another one here, and this one does run. But I think that one's from 1938. So just the fact it still exists and runs, a true testament to the old engineering. So folks, let's uh, introduce you to uh, Cal Cascad. So today we have a very special uh, visitor at the RAF Snaith Museum. Please introduce yourself. Well, thanks, AD. And uh, my name is Carl Kasgar. I'm curator with the Bomber Command Museum of Canada out in Alberta. And uh, this is the first time I've been here since you and your team yeah. have done. Uh, great things here at RAS Stage. Yes. And um, so um, this is an engine that my group has purchased, but we're having it long term loan to RAF Snaith Museum. You've got to come and see. This is the engine that powered the best Halifaxes in all of World War II, the Bristol Hercules. But uh, Adi, I'd like to compliment you guys on all the work you've done. Thank you. And uh, this is a tribute uh, to our bomber boys. And we do the same thing in Canada. And uh, it's the spirit of the people today that's keeping alive the spirit of the bomber boys from so many years ago. Couldn't agree more. Really but uh, this is, folks, you've got to come and see this engine. This is a a 1600 horsepower engine that powered the Halifax. It's a beautiful example and it's all part of our AF Snake. And it's not the only engine that we have of yours here. Okay, let's go over and look at that one. Yes. Eddie. So, again, 
Another engine that we can thank Carl for is this Rolls Royce Merlin from Halifax HR871. Please tell, tell us a little bit more about it. Yes, uh, that's one of my uh, Halifax recoveries. This is one of the engines. Mm -hmm. My group, Halifax 57 Rescue, goes all over the world to recover Halifaxes, which is the most important airplane in Canadian aviation history. In England, the Halifax was overshadowed by the Lancaster. And, but there was Merlins in Lancasters and Merlins in Halifaxes. And this is one of the engines that sat for over 70 years on the bottom of the Baltic Sea. And when we recovered HR 871, we brought up two of the engines, two Merlins from the early Halifaxes and HR871 was the serial number and uh, this is now on permanent display at RAF Snaith and uh, we couldn't think of a better home for it and uh, uh, we do appreciate you sharing this with your people that come to the museum. It's, it gets a lot of attention, it really does. And, and you'll notice the way Mother Nature has done a cutaway of the engine so you can actually see inside. But uh, it's a, a very worthy treasure and it's here at RAF Snaith. Thank you, Carl. Thank you very much. This Rolls Royce Merlin was never intended to be, uh, how should we say, got into a running condition. It's here to tell a story. This engine was one of four fitted to Halifax HR 871 and it flew with the 405 Squadron, a Canadian uh, squadron that were a Pathfinder force. So they would go over and drop target indicators over the targets before the main bomber stream. This Halifax was used on the uh, Hamburg Raids in 1943 in July and the starting of August. And on the last raid, uh, on the 2nd of August, she took a lightning strike. This put out both inner engines, and this is one of the inner engines. It also put out a lot of the um, navigation equipment. So the pilot, Sergeant John Alwyn Phillips, decided it's best that the crew bailed out to safety. So they flew over Sweden, they bailed out, and the aircraft was set to level fly out to sea. Um, on its two still running outer engines. Obviously eventually it lost height and it, it crashed into the sea and sunk to the bottom of the Baltic where it lay there for the best part of 80 years until it was recovered uh, as an ongoing project by Halifax 57 Rescue and the Bomber Command Museum of Canada and that's why it's come here. It was recovered, it has a good story to tell it was never intended to try and get it running or anything like that. It is literally to tell a story. Guess that's me fly over. Another engine at the RAF Snaith Museum, again, is thanks to Halifax 57 Rescue, and it's this Bristol Hercules. Now, as, as good as it looks, unfortunately, it has suffered internal corrosion of the cylinder sleeves, and many will consider this one scrapped too. However, if somebody walked through the door with 14 cylinders and all the bits to uh, rebuild it, it could be recommissioned. So, what is my rambling all about? Well, I would like to have a collection of engines that won the war. So, as much as many people will comment, this is worthless, it's less than worthless, it's scrap. Why are you bothering with that? It's about the history, folks. It's about the story. 
And it's about the sacrifice a lot of young people made. Yeah, we shouldn't forget about that. The panel there, and also the panel there, is from the same uh, aircraft, HR871. So yeah, it was last July, I, I roughly stood here and said this would be a good area to display. Um, a Rolls-Royce Merlin and a Bristol Hercules engine. And here we are, less than a year later with both. Well, it would be nice to have more engines. We have this on loan, which is just a humble generator, but it would have been used on the airfield, which again helped the war effort, helped us win the war. Now that hasn't been run for quite a few years, but we've been given permission to try it. Obviously we're not going to be running that. Obviously we're not going to be running that, but there are so many wartime engines that we could have running examples. Well folks, that's it for this video. I, uh, I just wanted to show the reasons why I want what looks like scrap engine parts that are worthless. So to tell a story in a museum. We're a small museum, we're just really getting going. Uh, and these artifacts really bring the place to life. They are a, a talking point. They get even those that are interested in engines standing about staring, asking questions, which is good. We should never forget our past. So on that bombshell, a big thank you to all the new subscribers. I hope you stick around. Those that are, uh, have been here a while, thanks for sticking with me. And we'll catch you on the next one.